you do. I hope you're doing fine, cause it's Q&A time again. Hello world, how's it going? Hope you guys are all doing great. And if not, as always, I hope it gets better for you. Oh, I meant to grab that mic. Uh -oh. That new mic I got, but I didn't. I got a new mic that should have gave me some better uh, volume here, and better, better audio, but should be all right anyways. As you see, I'm not at home. I am actually in Orlando, Florida right now. We are at Aquashella doing a thing. Got the booth going. Still gotta get fish and shrimp in there. It's been a haul. It was like, what, um, how many hours we spent on the road? Like 15, 16, 17? I don't know. I've been on the road since nine o'clock Eastern Standard Time yesterday. So sorry all coming in a little bit late, but Got locked out, had to go get my gamble, blah, 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 but we're here now, so we will uh, still have a Friday night live Q&A, and we'll still do what we got to do here, and if you guys saw the thumbnail, I am proud to announce that I will be judging the Aquashella Aquascape contest, as well as being a judge for the shrimp contest, too, so that was pretty cool to be able to go back to back, do like a shrimp judging and an aquascape judging. And I uh, feel very proud to be able to do that. And I will have a live stream here on the Aqua Sh Aqua Shella channel here on Sunday. Is it Sunday I'll be doing the talk? Do you know what time that was? Mm, I can find out. I think they have a list on Aqua Shella that actually tells you the, the live streams. But they'll have live streams on Aqua Shella um, all weekend. Four. Saturday at 4, which will be on myths of fish keeping which i think will be a great topic i'll be doing that with chattanooga chattanooga ed and also um fish room fever so that'll be awesome it'll be four o'clock tomorrow and um yeah so that's all what's going on here and what will be happening so if you guys are in the area or nearby don't have nothing to do for the weekend here in Florida. Come check it out. Aquashella in Orlando. Uh, go to aquashella.com. It'll pull up all the information up for you. But let's jump in here into the chat. Hello, hello, everybody. How's it going? ADHD says, Lucas, what do you do? What do you do? And member for five months. Thank you so much for that ADHD and your continued support says, ah, happy Aquashella. Well, thank you, thank you, thank you. And I saw you got a bunch of uh, boxes of fish and shrimp and stuff in on your channel the other day. Seems like you've had your hands full. Weather is nice and warm in Florida, that's for sure. And some of you guys know that we've actually been looking for a house in Florida, so I wasn't really planning on making this trip, but then they asked me to be a shrimp judge. And at first I was like, man, I don't think I'm gonna make it just because everything going on. And then they asked me to be an aquascaping judge and just a bunch of things were lining up. So I just had to come and we figured we'd look at some houses too while we were down here. So we went and saw a house before we got here and then we are supposed to be looking at a couple um, on our way back. Can I colony breed black tiger betas? Uh, more than likely not. It'll be difficult. I'm not, it could, possibly be done in a big enough tank with enough coverage i'm talking about rocks and lots of plants and places for fry to hide and if you were wanting to do something like that you're going to have to have a live eco type of system where you got daphnia kind of circulating as well as uh, black worms and stuff that actually live in the aquarium that way there's always something that they can eat <sighs> Do, 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 do. Scrolly, scrolly, scrolly. 600 shrimp. That's a lot of shrimp. ADHD. Or can we watch it later? Oh, will it be live only or can we watch it later? So those lives that they do for Aquashella, if you go to YouTube and go type in Aquashella, and then sometimes I don't know if it'll actually show up the live stream or something. You may have to go to the channel filter. But a thumbnail for one of the live streams should pop up and um, take you to the channel. And then they save all the live streams on that so you can watch them later. And they got quite a few good topics going on. 
Um, Brandon Ramirez says, hey, Big Boss, pregame question. Why would a shrimp population boom and then die back, never go extinct, but thrive and then struggle after a while? I maintain weekly water changes. So uh, more, than hap more than likely happen, it's kind of like what happens to snails as well, is they'll hit that boom, they'll hit that population boom, and then they like figure out I'm not exactly sure the science behind it, but somehow they figure out like this doesn't work if we have this many shrimp. So maybe they just stop breeding and then um, because they may look at that as maybe a dissonance to themselves. But it is weird how that happens with snails and shrimp that the population can boom and then you end up with next to nothing. I was actually looking into my snowball tank, which was booming huge, and then I tried to bait them before I came here to catch some, and I actually, I was shocked to not see any many. So I think that recently happened to me with mine as well. And really the best thing to do is probably just take them out of that tank. That way they will find a new habitat, and then they will maybe hopefully start producing again without giving you problems and can you guys hear me all right I don't know how the sound is here with it being such a big room and the uh, other sound around I feel like I gotta jump in be close to here but let me know uh, Michigan tropicals thank you thank you so much brother and big shout out to you Michigan tropicals for helping me out here at aqua shell getting set up and getting all my stuff uh, going so thank you thank you for that and the support it says down to hit the pond once you're done yes sir for sure you know it and uh, once again thank you brother um uh, right uh brandon ramirez says do you think a bigger tank as in bigger than 10 is better for breeding well if you're going to colony breed a baddest type fish which like to just hunt and predate all day long and just pick at stuff if you're going to colony breed them, more than likely you're going to have to go with a bigger tank than a 10 gallon. I would say like a 40 gallon breeder or maybe a low boy or something. Something with a lot of surface area. So the betas, they don't need much like water volume. They could go with a like a frag tank or something and just more surface area would be best for them. Um, 10 gallon, like maybe if you like stack stuff high enough, maybe that would work as far as like rocks up and up but you'd have to have a lot of live food going on and i still don't think that'd be enough because once that wriggler came out or that fry came out it's going to be a snack for that fish and holy moly big d's aquatics thank you thank you thank you thank you so much for the huge 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 50 dollars super chat brother i uh, thank you thank you so what's up brother i hope you're doing well and i hope you're doing well as well once again i could never thank you enough Super awesome of you. Um, Diane S. says, I have a yo-yo loach that the last third of his body near his tail is darker than the rest of him. He swims fine, eats fine. Any clue why? Hmm. Usually, now I don't know if the yo-yo loach naturally can change color in its older ages. But sometimes that could be lack of oxygenation and circulation to their blood. But I'm not 100% sure on the yo-yo loaches. Because I haven't kept one that long myself. So if somebody in the chat can help her out, um, that would be great. And let's see, I'll try to scroll back because I don't know if I missed any questions. Okay, I don't think I did. Oh, Patrick Callahan says, had a tank cracked and moved your cherry shrimp to a planted CO2. Oh, I guess I can get over it. That way you guys get a little more tank, I guess. There's no fish to watch, but sorry, there's no barbs. Um, but it says, had a tank cracked and moved your cherry shrimp to a planted CO2 tank. No rock piles, but it's full of jungle. All females are pregnant, but no babies for a month now. What happened? So the CO2 could be an uh, issue with shrimp. Uh, shrimp neocaridinias usually do not like the CO2 because it does add softness and acidity to your water. And it also uh, outgasses your oxygen. That's a big reason why I don't use CO2 is when it comes to shrimp and fish, if you're going to be breeding stuff, like CO2 is not for that. CO2 is for mostly the plants and 
aquascaping type tanks because uh, fish really do not care for it. Mm -hmm. And you can actually make your fish drunk off of CO2. You can kill them too. Uh, ADHD Aquatics says, I have a culture of black worms. How would you suggest I keep them alive in a tank for constant food for fish <clears throat> and lots of gravel? So the <clears throat> trickiest part is keeping their water clean enough. And um, it's good if you can have like kind of a flow through system with them as far as the water going through. But you can still keep them in like a natural tank where you don't have a lot of water changes. You could either use sand, that way you can sift them out. That would probably be my best suggestion because of the rocks, in my opinion, you mush them up and you could hurt them more. I would just say use some type of sand for them. And then whenever you go to try to harvest them, I always like putting food on top of a sponge and then they get up into the sponge and then I could take them out to somewhere else. But if you get like a, um, one of those trays that they put underneath washer and dryers or like a water heater, um, if you could get like a flow through system through that and then have like rocks or sand on part of it and then feed them over to where there's no rock and sand and they'd have to come over into the bear area to eat then you could also uh, bait them that way that way you wouldn't even have to sift them through so there's a few ways to do it and then as far as feeding them that's the uh, tricky part you can feed them regular food i actually just feed mine tetra tropical granules and they eat it scroll 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 i'm gonna hit this hot tub man i wish i could hit a hot tub right about now that sounds i do Gary Stein says, LRB, my yellow belly slider had a small indentation on top of his shell. Now it has white fungus. Do you have any advice, please, and thanks? So the best thing to do with any kind of wound is since it's fungus, um, I don't know if you could use like a API fungus cure for that. I don't know what they make for turtles. I've never had to deal with that with turtles, but definitely just try to clean the wound of that fungus find something that's not of abrasive for that fungus and then just let it naturally heal, give it clean water, try to uh, coat it as best as you can. Like band-aids, I'm not a fan of band-aids. In my opinion, you put band-aids on stuff, it's gonna last, like it takes longer to heal up and it really doesn't allow that air and oxygen to like really do the healing process like it naturally should. So I wouldn't recommend trying to bandage it or nothing, but I hope he turns out all right. I love turtles. I like turtles. <laughs> uh, Sarko Human says, when times are tough, 50 bucks can really make a difference. That is for sure, brother, for sure. And that's why a big, big shout out to Big D and that huge help. Arcus says, Lucas, I've been checking Florida property and the prices are crazy. The prices are crazy. So I thank everybody from California and the West Coast and New York and everybody with the whole uncertainty of a lot going on. Everybody wants to go live in paradise, I think. So I'm in the same boat, so I can't say nothing. But yeah, prices are crazy right now. Some areas are still pretty reasonable, but compared to like... Uh, California say a house over there you could buy like the crappiest houses will go for a million bucks like they can need completely remodeled from the 60s and they'd still charge it a million bucks and still have to put like 200 grand to even get it to be livable so to those kind of people to come and pay half a million dollars for the prices down here it's actually pretty cheap for them and I think that's reflecting a lot into the market and then the hedge companies buying up uh, doesn't help. Lucas is Big D funded. Oh, yeah, for sure. Big D's been funding me for a minute. He has been absolutely awesome. Not the first time he's done it either. It's been amazing. Brandon Ramirez says, are detritus worms a bad life food? No, they're definitely good life food and shrimp will actually eat them too. So he says, I have a like one inch worm in my substrate. Also, could they affect my shrimp negatively? No, like if you start overfeeding, and like say if it's a nematode, it could get unsightly 
because they may start populating and whatnot but it shouldn't negatively affect your shrimp unless like that population got so out of control that the shrimp had troubles getting to their food which the shrimp will actually end up turning those uh nematodes or planaria or whatever little worm you have in there and um sometimes that's how they'll actually reproduce faster especially like that's why planaria really takes off because if you split planaria up into just even one cell it can grow off of that cell and that's how the shrimp will tear them up and then that'll just get that population of that planaria really going if there's enough food in there to feed them um lester says how do you like to deal with a low ph from a r ODI system. So low pH, I don't really mess with. I would not chase mess, uh, chase pH because it could also read off a of per hydrogen. Reason why it's low through RODI is because it's not very oxygenated after it goes through all that filtration system. So you don't have a lot of hydrogen molecules that you have that would come out of the tap and why a lot of tap water for people will read 8.6 plus off the chain. So I would look more towards into your TDS to really tell you your softness and your hardness and what that uh, uh, system is actually doing for you. TDS, I'll tell you all you need to know. Or you can do a GHKH test, which is pretty much what your TDS is combined. IDH Aquatics says, Lucas, my culture is doing well, but I'm wondering how I can keep black worms alive in a fish tank long enough for fish to eat on them like you mentioned before the beta. So the trick is that, to go ahead and season that tank with the black worms. That way they know they can go hide and do whatever and they can get comfortable. Then you add the baddest in. And you know, maybe you only need like a week or two to do that. As long as they know that they can go into the ground they could get away from the fish because same with the black worms if those black worms get eaten and segmented from the baddest just like when the worm what they'll do is they'll pinch put their heads up off the top of the surface and then the baddest will eat it and then the worm will actually still live because they can get away and then it can grow from that and if you cut those worms i guess they can actually grow off of being segmented as well with the black worms So, I mean, really, honestly, even if you had like a rock pile in there and you already had the baddest in there, if you put the worms over the rock pile, some would get down there, enough would get down there. The thing is, with the black worms, it can take them time to naturally reproduce, but like I mentioned, they can also breed out being segmented. You just may not see them often. So, like, even my rainbow fish tank that I have my bigger rainbow fish in, there's a ton of black worms in there, but you'll never see them because the quarry cats and the uh, rainbows are always at them. But if you stir up the substrate, you'll see them. Largemouth bass, thank you so much for being a member. 15 months. That is absolutely awesome. Saying happy Friday. Happy Friday to you too, brother. Thank you. And Christopher Gonzalez says, if I'm not bringing Neocaridinia shrimp for profit, can I have a heavily planted tank? versus a limited planted tank the tanks are is a 20 long also what's a good filter for shrimp tank okay so uh you can have a heavy planted tank for shrimp for sure um if you're trying to do the co2 though um it just it's the gas issue that causes a problem with the neocaridinias or even with any shrimp is they do like their oxygen so if you're outgassing that oxygen that's just the biggest problem you can get away with it they're just probably not going to breed much and since you're not going to do it for profit i don't know i don't know how long their lifespan will be so i mean i still don't really recommend it that much with co2 but if it's a light co2 not as big of a problem so if you just dose just enough to like keep things going because you don't really want to blast CO2 either. Like, it's it's best to kind of trickle it in. Because it kind of builds up to a, a what do I want to say? A certain amount, you know? Yeah, homeostasis. And then if it uh, goes beyond that, then it just, you're losing gas, you're costing more, and you're potentially going to hurt your stuff for just a little bit of plant growth. 
and it's not going to do that much difference. And even some plants, you can outstress them and outdo them with too much. So it's always best to be very conservative about doing CO2. But you can do them in a heavily planted tank. You can get a heavily planted tank without CO2 as well. Matter of fact, I was going to make a top 10 easiest plant video for you guys and kind of give you guys all the ideal of the easiest plants that you can make a fully planted aquarium without even really needing to do much. Which is pretty much what's on my website right now because that's pretty much everything in my fish room because, well, I neglected it for about two years and now I know what really, really is easy to keep. Uh, Marvin's Loach Garden says, fabricating a Blaco cave out of shell and silicone, any tips? So sometimes that silicone can be tricky to stick to that shell. Um, I honestly maybe would have probably used Gorilla Glue instead. I think you might have a better chance with Gorilla Glue gluing that shell together. Joe Provenzano says, how do you avoid planaria worm? It's really hard to avoid, mostly with plants. Um, that's where they'll mostly come from, but the best way to avoid them is quarantine your stuff and then treat as necessary. ADH Aquatic says, everybody, everyone says Java moss grows slowly. Do you think any amount of CO2 light and ferts will make it grow faster or is it just going to be slow forever no matter what? So what happens is if you have just a little Java moss, it can take some time going with the biomass. And if you put too much light on it, it actually won't grow that fast. If you try to push it to grow fast, it won't. Put it in like a low lit tank, low lit area, neglect it. And then uh, it should just start growing for you. It likes to be left alone. Nietzsche. Uh, Lee Owen says, what is it that makes us nerd out so hard on aquarium life? I don't know. That's a good question. I think it's the uh, nature connection for sure. Like a lot, us as humans, we just have this connection with nature. And I think that brings us in. It brings that part into our lives that we often don't get in our society these days. So I think that's uh, one of the biggest reasons. Son of a Quack says, how do you spot those staghorn algae? I had my hands on some peroxide, but no syringe or handheld siphon. Can I just pour around the spot? So I know like so my hydrogen peroxide bottles, they have like a very, very tiny opening to where you can just dribble out a little bit. Um, best thing to do, if possible, lower the water level to get it up out of the water level. And you could actually just dose it right on top of it if you get it out of the water level. If not, then you kind of need the syringe to get it up underneath the water. Uh, Guppy B says, how much money should I bring tomorrow? As much as the bank will let you leverage and borrow. <laughs> Uh, Sunset Jen says, hey Lucas, I have a large female yellow Neo. She molted, but looks like a little is left out of the tips of her tail. Thoughts? So this is interesting because I feel like sometimes yellows can go through phases where they will change where the coloration can be in their bodies sometimes. And I see this within the yellow Neos like yellow really neos that i've made and even sometimes those will just go full yellow at some point what causes it and why i'm not really sure um doesn't really make sense to me atomic injections 47 says what plants would you use if you want something to overtake a cichlid tank or two so the best thing to do is use like floating type plants first and you got to kind of be resourceful here because also i don't know what cichlids you have but sometimes you can put enough in there that it will feed them but won't be like they won't overfeed on it so you can still grow them and you could use that technique as well to keep them away from other plants like maybe ferns or anubiuses um some of the like bacopa they may not think bacopa tastes very good 
like anything like a hard tissue kind of plant any like soft tissue kind of plants those are going to be the ones being eaten but like water lettuce or frog bits stuff like that that could uh overtake a cichlid tank or two but you got to be careful with that too if you're taking over the whole surface area of an aquarium with floated plants that can actually cause problems so you can build like feeder rings out of airline tubing or even vinyl tubing I was gonna to try to build a big feeder ring out of vinyl tubing for one of my tanks. I don't know if, I haven't like tried like the bigger gauge tubing to like make it, make like a heavy, heavy duty feeder ring. But uh, I do plan on trying that here someday. Well, thank you, Chris, glad you got your package. And I'm glad they are happily exploring their new homes. Thank you, thank you, thank you for your support and your order, brother. Just logging on. Are you at Aquashella Orlando? Sybil, my girlfriend, wants to say hello. Well, hello, Sybil. Hello, Jason. And yes, we are at Aquashella. So if you want to come by and say hello, please do. We will be here all weekend. Uh, Brandon Ramirez, so can blackworms be tannish white? So no, more than likely, that's going to be a nematode. Which they're harmless. They're just unsightly. And you can use dog dewormer, pan cure seed dog dewormer. Same thing with plant uh, planaria as with the nematodes, where you get this dog dewormer, pan cure seed. Or they even make, for people who don't want to go through all this method, uh, they have like a no planaria, which is the same thing as vabendazole that is into a solution that you add to your aquarium as well. But if you want to go with the pan cure seed, method which is the actual dry version of that medicine um, you get 0 0.1 grams per 10 gallons and then you mush it up with just like a drop or two so it kind of creates a paste and then you add some water to it that way you can kind of create your own liquid because if you just dump the powder in your tank then it'll like float around it'll stick to the top it won't really get in there but if you turn it into your own liquid with like the no planaria you can like drop it in you only get so much of that liquid but if you actually make your own then you can like put it into like more of a water column that way it'll actually spread around a lot more but when it comes to worm worm problems that's the best to do just be careful if you got mystery snails and nearite snails it doesn't really mess with pond or uh, ram's horn snails too much so that's about the only thing that it will affect it's shrimp and fish and plant safe uh, Jonathan Hendrick says should my blue dream be swimming around the tank like fish yeah for sure especially the males males love to fly around all over the tank and then the females just usually hang out towards the bottom got any water oh I'm so thirsty thank you Killing me softly says I have a trio of tiger baddies. Hey, I got you that towel. I remembered. I'm too tired to even worry about it. <laughs> oh, I thought you'd be excited. Come on. Oh, yeah. All right, how much I owe you? Oh, nothing. I, no, I no, don't. You no. You sure? Yeah, I'm sure. I, I am live right now, though, so I gotta. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But <laughs> we'll talk. We'll talk. Um. Okay, I kind of got distracted there let's see will red cherry shrimp eat the tail fin of a pygmy cory possibly possibly if they catch that pygmy cory in their rock pile where they're trying to breed and stuff and he's sleeping yeah it could happen oh glorious water rj says do you hate plastic plants i'm a noob and would kill them with inadequate care but i can something well rj i don't know if hate such a strong word i don't really hate on much besides like winter <laughs> um so like even with like they make like koi breeding spawning moths which is kind of like a fake plant and i think those are actually really great for like certain breeding projects but you know what if you're struggling with plants i would say check out the plants on my website like it's really hard to kill them 
like super hard to kill them. It all depends on where you're getting your plants. If you're getting your plants from like a box store, more than likely they're being grown from uh, out of the water and then their transitional period and it could be really problematic and then it makes it feel like you're having like you're being a noob or you're having problems when the actual problem is from the source and how they're selling you the plants but i would say never give up on that uh, because once you get the natural plants going and sand i highly recommend sand sand makes it easy Use like your vowels, um, crypts are awesome, pearlweeds, awesome, all kinds of plants that can uh, grow pretty easily. Sorry if I'm missing anybody's questions, I'm trying to knock out all the ones as much as I can here. Undercover Comedy Woman says, I added a chunk of wonder shell to my yellow shrimp tank after reading about it. The next day, most shrimp have died. Oh crap, that's not good. Do you have any experience with this? With yellow shrimp, hmm, well, considering the wonder shell is supposed to be mostly calcium and whatnot, um, usually shouldn't affect them, especially adding extra hardness. Like, you could add a lot of hardness to a shrimp tank, a neocaridina shrimp tank, and it shouldn't really affect them. I don't know where that wonder shell come from. I hear a lot of people use them and don't have any issues with them. So that is really questionable. Maybe it got tainted somehow within the uh, processing of it. That's the only thing I could really think of. Because that shouldn't have happened. But honestly, like people give me a wonder shell or something, I'm kind of like skeptical. I don't, I won't like use that stuff just because I know that if it's not broken, then I don't really need to fix it. Uh, Christopher Gonzalez says, if I breed Blue Dream Neocaridina shrimp with Tangerine Tiger shrimp, what type of shrimp will come from those two species? Well, unfortunately, you can't mix those two. Neocaridinas and Caridinas will not mix together. And uh, Lars K, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for the $10 super chat. I appreciate it, brother, and hope you're having a great Friday. And thank you, thank you so much for the big $10 super chat never thank you enough and you as well patrick hardy with the fist bump back at you brother thank you thank you so much for your super chat and support as well very very helpful especially with the gas prices right now and the housing prices as mentioned earlier in the video uh, let's see scrolling 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 but i'm excited like the house that we looked at today so it has three ponds on it technically it's like five but they counted it as three because one once in a while the one will flood over to the other which connects it into two big ponds but it was kind of like its own preserve it had 30 acres these things were like spring fed ponds so you can see all the way down it it was absolutely amazing it had the uh, barn with electricity in it which we couldn't see on the MLS like what was going on in that so that was exciting only problem with it is it's not down South Florida but just for the area man just uh may have to just do it but we'll see after we look at other houses here so i got distracted thinking about ponds uh let's see do, 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 do. patrick hardy holy moly my brother thank you thank you so much for the huge 20 dollars super chat says go well, right on right on man i went looking around for you guys Hoping that like I could find a good fish tank because usually they have like that round fish tank with like all the cardinals swimming and stuff. I was going to try to have that background for you guys so you guys could at least see some fish, but there was like no luck for like tanks here. There's there's some, but they're smaller and most don't have um, plants or fish in them to watch. But I was trying to look for that for you guys. But Patrick Hardy, thank you, thank you again for the huge super chat. Really, really appreciate you. And I'm going to scroll kind of towards the bottom here and uh try to catch up with the uh, chat lucas can you shrimp walk oh my god <laughs> they do the shrimp walk do people is there a shrimp walk has somebody already created that if not that needs to be done because that just sounds absolutely awesome uh ben Thiesfeld, thank you so much for the ten dollars super chat ben thank you thank you thank you really appreciate you 
guys are absolutely awesome. Once again, I could not do this without you guys. You guys have absolutely made dreams come true. And you know what? I want to be here giving you guys all this information and be able to share all this if it hasn't been for your awesomeness. All you guys like this community. Absolutely beautiful. So thank you. Uh, Christopher Gonzalez says, So what do shrimp create the orange eye blue tigers? So the orange eye blue tigers, they are a caridinia and they come from... Do you know that? Which ones create the... What? This guy's actually, he's a big shrimp guru too. The uh, blue-eyed tigers. What actually creates those? I'm then, not sure. Ray did they pull those out of a tangerine tiger? Was it a mutation that came out of them eventually? I'm not sure or something? At that point. Okay, I'm not sure either. I'm not sure if that how they actually morphed that out. Those actually were around. That was one of the uh, ones that came not too much after the red cherries and the black and red uh, crystals. And that was like the tangerines and then the uh, blue eyes started coming out. And that was like a decade plus ago, easily. Patrick Harley, Patrick Hardy, thank you, thank you so much again for the super chat. Throwing down the $5 super chat, dropping the mic. My brother, appreciate you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, scroll, 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 scroll. Maybe there's an extra Kufaro Ranch for sale. Yeah, right? That'd probably come with the pond. I saw he's got a new one going on. Hey, 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 Whoa. looky there. It's a wild, <laughs> wild 12G. What's up, brother? I'm going through some comments. Oh yeah, nice. This is, uh, we do a little Q and A every Friday night. Oh. Yeah, kind of help out the community with that's, their fish problems. That's nice. Yeah, yeah. So I've got those questions. I am at the bottom here. So throw them out there. And if you don't know Coral 12G, go check him out. He's on YouTube. He's the one that really throws a lot of this aqua shell. It's you and like uh, Sean. Mr. And, Mr. Schnells. Yeah, Mr. Schnell. So they've created this awesomeness. And this is what, like the fifth one? What did they get? What did they ask? Oh, he just, that's Big D. He's a big supporter. He does that. He likes to just chuck $50 every once in a while. Big D. Yeah, he's the man. Very generous, that guy. He is. He's awesome. <laughs> Did you hear that, Big D? I hope you heard that. That's hilarious. Uh, good old George. He's funny. But he's been coming out with some banger videos lately. If you have not seen Coral 12G, George, he actually, I think he was in Columbia not long ago. He was with Heiko Blair. I'm doing some stuff with him. Absolutely really cool stuff and videos he's been coming out with. Um, all right, scroll, scroll, scroll. <laughs> so who else is there that you've seen? So there is a lot of people. Actually, here, let's go on a little trip here. And I could imagine that there's probably still a group of them. We'll see if they're still here. But there's like Brett Raymer from Tank, there's Primetime Aquatics, there's KG Tropicals, there's Aquarium Co-op, there's Serpa Design, there's Creative Pet Keeping, there's Chattanooga Ed, Fish Room Fever, Michigan Tropicals, um, Joe Shrimp Shack, let's see, who else? Grant Eater, Eater's Garden. We got Bad Fish Dustin's Fish Tanks, he's here somewhere. Um, let's see, Rob, Flip Aquatics, can't forget him. Big shout out to Flip Aquatics. He's been really helpful for uh, getting me set up and stuff. But let me get you flipped out or flipped around here. Kind of see a little more of the convention here. I'll stop and slow down. Look, tanks for sale, driftwood for sale, lots of stuff for sale. So Orlando, Florida. If you guys are in Florida and you're missing this, oh, Blake's Aquatics will be here too. Or not Blake's Aquatics, but Blake's Exotics. So even if it's not just, if you're into lizards, other stuff, like it's not just fish stuff. There's all kinds of stuff. We're gonna have mermaids here. There's like a whole hangout here. Let's see, there's probably like, what is it, 10, 1030? And you still got all these guys chilling, talking, hanging out, doing their thing. And then we'll be doing live streams over here uh, Saturday and Sunday as well. And then we'll have like Greg Woodstock. We got the Aquascape team, all them here. So, ooh, Coral 12G's even got his booth going. 
So yeah, lots and lots and lots of stuff. I gotta give Jay Wilson a shout out. And not even to mention the salties, like good lord, there's a whole freaking scheme of salties. I, I'm not as vocabbed in all the salties. How's it going? Victoria Creates, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So there's another YouTuber. So they're all over the place here. And then here's like more of the salty stuff. But I'm not going to show you guys too much because you guys got to get here to come see this. Oh, that's cool. Look at this loach. You got a big TV. Oh, I just missed it. It flashed. It had like a big like yo-yo loach in there. It looked totally cool. Art too, if you guys like art. Great place for art. Especially for fish art. Oh, Dustin must have got some new shirts. Of course he would have a loach shirt. He absolutely loves his Oscars and loaches. Aquascaping contest going on too. Tanner is an amazing guy. He is an amazing guy. I absolutely love Tanner. He uh, gave me this substrate that he would use for uh, terrariums and stuff. And I used it in uh, one of my aquariums just because. I wanted to see what it did. And I tell you what, that was one of my favorite substrates. And he's just genuinely a nice guy. I've got a uh, tour of his a long time ago. Which his room's completely different now. But this is cool. Cichlids in here. Like, check this out. Look at these Oscars. Bruh. 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 But I don't even know what's in these. That is all kinds of stuff. Oh, these are koi. Oh, no. Oh, flashbacks. Flashbacks. I'm having flashbacks. Okay. Yeah. But, like, there's all kinds of stuff to do here. I think they'll have kids stuff here. Uh, there's raffles, Thousand Mermaids. We actually get to hang out with the mermaids, which is awesome for Sarah and I. We both love mermaids. And then right now, um, all I really got to do is get fish in here. Uh, finish labeling stuff. Sarah's got all the bags, tons of plants going on. We didn't bring a whole lot of fish because since we're selling our house, we want to leave fish for the other guy. And splitting the fish and all that I want to be able to leave some because we are supposed to be closing on our house on the 10th and uh, that's happening well, let's see do, 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 do. what company is Jay Wilson with this year lol <laughs> um, what is the name I don't know how they say it s i c c e sissy sissy filters oh he's gonna kill me if he hears that Sick, sick, sick filters. I don't know. <laughs> but it's S I C C E, I believe, is how you pronounce it. Take me on a trip in your special rocket ship. You know, on my gimbal. Let's see. Are they dwarf crayfish, same as Neocaridinia shrimp? You got any? No, they are not the same. And no, I don't do dwarf crayfish because in a lot of areas, those are illegal. Especially over in like Washington and stuff. So if it's illegal in any states, I don't even mess with it. Uh, all right. Um, let's see. Scroll, scroll, scroll. So who else is there you've seen? Oh, I think. Is that the one I was at? Oh. Let's see. Did Corey get there yet? Corey did get here. He was here with Zinzo. They were setting up. I got to just pretty much say hello. He's kind of busy setting up. I don't like to borrow, bother people when they're setting up because you know, it can take some time. Uh, walk away, Lucas, says Candy. You already know, Candy. Um, let's see. Do, 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 do. Time to say goodbye. It is about time to say goodbye on here because I do have to hop off here because we were kind of late. With the live stream and i do not want to step on toes here i can't remember who comes on after me if it's secret history living in your aquarium or if it's uh danakin anymore because they're everybody's switching it up there for a while but i do not want to uh step on their toes but i am gonna hop off here thank you thank you all so much for uh joining us and for the support absolutely amazing and hopefully I get to see some of you guys this weekend. 
and if not i'm gonna do my best to try to get a video out for you sunday i actually shot a quick one while i was bagging all this stuff it's been a crazy week just between shipping like usually wednesday night we get to uh relax a little bit after like tuesday shipping like bagging and then boxing on wednesday and all that stuff but now we had to jump straight into bagging all this stuff for up here and then pretty much been on the road since so I don't even remember where I was going at with that because I'm so tired at this point. But anyways, I appreciate you guys all for supporting, helping me get here, being able to share with you guys. And thank you, thank you, thank you. And hope you guys all have a great weekend. Until next time. Peace, everybody. Have a great one.